I just think that the divorce rate is less because I think the men and the women are putting a lot more effort into this. Um, I mean, look at what you guys are doing right now. You know, on a Monday evening, you're on this webcast, watching this, listening to me, trying to get more information. There's probably better things you can be doing than this right now. So, McKissick wants to know, how does the divorce rate for foreign marriages compare to the regular U.S. divorce rate? So, the studies that have been done, and again, um, the Justice Department did a study, others have done studies, and it normally shows that the divorce rate for intercultural marriages, the marriages that we get involved with, are normally much less than the divorce rate, um, the U.S. divorce rate. Right, U.S. divorce rates hovering depending on who you ask um, and how long that marriage was. Right, so when does that actually count? But the divorce rates hovering right around 50% or so. And for intercultural marriages, it's less. I don't know exactly how much less, but from what I've been told from the different studies that I've seen, it is less. Um, and I think there's reasons for that. First of all, I know many couples that have been married for many, many years that have met through us. I know this is just anecdotal, right? That's just me. But I see it out there and I see these couples staying together. I mean, yes, I hear about divorces, obviously. I'm going to hear that. Unfortunately, it's going to happen. But I also see so many couples that are staying together. We've been doing this now for a long time, 25 years. So we have many couples that have been married for a long time. I mean, take my marriage, for example, uh, 23 years. Well excuse me, 21 years. We met 23 years ago, been married now for over 21 years. Um, and we met at a social just like this in St. Petersburg, Russia. Um, it was amazing. It was love at first sight for me. And after a few glasses of champagne for Tanya, it was love at first sight for Tanya. <clears throat> Poor Tanya. Um, so uh, yeah, I just think that the divorce rate is less because I think the men and the women are putting a lot more effort into this. Um, I mean, look at what you guys are doing right now. You know, on a Monday evening, you're on this webcast, watching this, listening to me, trying to get more information. There's probably better things you could be doing than this right now, but this is something that's important to you. So you're spending the time, you're doing your due diligence to try to find that right match for you. And I think that's great. And then the women themselves, they are actually reaching out and they're trying to find a different option, a better option than what they have in their city, in their state or wherever they live, right? And so they're trying to find a better option for it. So they're putting a lot more effort into finding Mr. Right. You're putting a lot more effort in finding Mrs. Right. And by doing that, I think it really does um, show that these marriages tend to last longer. Um, there's just a lot more effort that goes into these. You're just not marrying, you know, the woman down at the corner bar. You're really going halfway around the world to find that right person. And I think that speaks volumes to why these marriages tend to last a little bit longer. Um, yeah. Okay. But guys, keep in mind, that your mind can play tricks on you. That's why you got to go over and meet these women in person. Because what you see is great, right? And you think, oh my God, and you start building this up in your mind. But until you go and meet and really feel that chemistry, feel it in person, um, you're never really going to know, right? And so that's why I always caution guys, especially with just the, the profile photos of, you know, falling in love with just a photo, right? A, a, a one-dimensional photo on the internet and, and building the picture of this, well, building the story of this picture of this photo in your mind, building it up so much to where you're already, you know, having children together and living in a house and doing all these things, right? You haven't even met her yet. You know, that's why, you know, I feel bad for the 95% of guys that will never go and get on a plane. They will never go and experience what this is really like. They'll just, you know, be that virtual keyboard Romeo guy and, and, and just not on our site, but others too. And, and never really move away from that and give himself 
that opportunity to go and meet this woman in person. It's such an amazing opportunity. I know if I wasn't there, if I was not in that room and I didn't have that chance to meet Tanya that night, way back that, what was it? That July night, 23 years ago, this July, it'll be 23 years. If I didn't, well, if I wasn't there, you know, that wouldn't have happened. And she was at a table with five beautiful women. And all five of those beautiful women met and married men via a foreign affair, right? All of them. And she's still in touch with some of them. One of them is a really good friend of hers that lives in Michigan. Um, met a wonderful uh, physician that then they live there and have for uh, as long as we've been married just about, right? So I'm telling you, this can and does work, but it will never work if you don't give it the opportunity, the chance of putting yourself in that place to be successful. All right. Do you feel like your search may be hopeless? Check out our website at AsianLoveMates.com. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Then click on the notice bell to get notified every time we add something new.